our journey begins at the edge of the European Union. Mariana Zhukoshkina has lived in this border village on Lake Vistitis for 82 years. She's seen the boundary posts change more than once. First, it was Germany's East Prussia, then the Soviet Union. Today, she can no longer visit the Russian side whenever she wishes. No, today, even if we wanted to, we couldn't go over there. There used to be so many mushrooms there. We brought home baskets full of them. When was the crossing closed? They closed the border when Lithuania became an independent state. That was over 20 years ago. People who live on the border either live in fear or have come to terms with it. Russia is planning maneuvers here for the coming autumn. We've gotten used to the speeches about the danger from Russia. Let them hold their maneuvers. It doesn't bother us. First it's these soldiers, then the others. That's their job. The border near Mariona is blocked off with planks. But there are plenty of crossings, legal or otherwise. As conservative MP Laurinus Koschunus tells it, Lithuania is in urgent need of a continuous fence to leave no doubt where Russia ends and Lithuania begins. When we meet him, work on the fence has stopped until signal wire can be delivered. The 12,000 posts alone cost nearly a million and a half euros. Hello. <laughs> if you look at this, how impressive is that to you? Uh, it's impressive, but not too much, you know, because I, I saw the higher, much more higher in Hungary. Uh, it's two meters high. I would say three meters or four meters would be better. His greatest concern is that Russia could smuggle disguised soldiers across like they did in Ukraine. Little green men, as they're called, that at first go undetected. So what are the green mans for? Oh, it's new, new threat. How to control our country? Well, Russia is a, a, a regime which uh, does not know where its border starts and when its border ends. It's a dilemma for Russia, historical dilemma. The border region along the Shashupa River looks peaceful enough at the moment. No armies, large or small, are anywhere near. Many of the families in this valley have lived here for generations. They catch fish and keep cattle. It looks idyllic, but the hamlet of Schweiganai gets lots of visitors. For some time now, the border patrol has been passing through here regularly, about three times a day. And what is this? We're under constant surveillance. The border police will be installing a camera here as soon as possible. Then they say we'll be safe, but that sounds a bit ironic. It may take a good dose of humor to be able to live on the border at all. At the end of our 88-kilometer journey, along rivers and across country, we encounter a farmer named Laimonus Tartkevichus. He's just come from a long work day with 70 dairy cows. And now he's off to his favorite spot on a river with a clear view of the Russian side. He says he feels no immediate threat. He's just a little worried. He knows what maneuvers sound like. Sometimes the Russians conduct military exercises. They explode something or set bombs off. There was a boom about two years ago and it rattled our windows. Who knows what can happen with or without a fence? I don't think the fence is going to help. If they want to, they'll just drive right through it. Limonos always keeps one eye open. His father says if anything happens here, they'll be the first to know. Limonos swims no further than the middle of the river. That's where Russia begins.